agree with uh, what you were just saying about the consumer side. City is probably the most interesting earnings to the large banks. Mm -hmm. Uh, but on the counterparty side, we're seeing a lot of uh, rough water simply because the Fed is still tightening. You know, I laugh when I hear people talking about easing because we're still running off the balance sheet. Repo rates have been going up since the end of June mm -hmm. on falling volumes. So money walked Doesn't out of this that, market. Does that end, though, because they are going I to be so. cutting and the, the runoff on the balance sheet, that, that will end at a specific point as well? I am not so sure. So it's for a finite amount of time. So. I, am, right. I am short uh, the cut. i got to tell you, I think Jay Powell made very clear he's going to stop the portfolio runoff first, which brings him back to neutral. Right. And then maybe later in the year we see a cut. Later, so so this almost 100% pricing in in the markets, they're wrong. Yeah, I think so because you got to remember, it's not just about the target for Fed funds; it's about what they do with the balance sheet. We haven't had to deal with this, and I don't think most equity analysts who never think about the fixed income market, never think about repo, uh, are missing the, the the point here. So ultimately, it is about what does it mean for the short end of the money market. And right now, it's going up. So well, just to be clear, you're saying, you're not saying he shouldn't, because I agree he shouldn't. No, you're saying he, he won't, mm -hmm. right? I don't think he will. I think the politics and also the technicals, uh, there are a lot of people in the Fed system who don't think a cut is needed for the economy. The markets, obviously. I, I agree with that. But that's a separate question. But, and politically, does I he want to endorse <laughs> yeah. the president's position? I don't think any well, Fed then, governor Well, then wants he's to allowing himself yeah. to be political, if that's really the reason well, why he's not going to do it. Well, they are political. You, you realize that's a miracle on ice call, because the, it's I basically 100% right now. I've been out on Twitter saying it. So, look, I work in the fixed income world. I work in credit. I sit right across from our repo traders. And I'm just telling you, it's tight. So if there was a reason to cut, it's because of what's going on in the money market. Okay, right so now. to that point, you mentioned the balance sheet runoff. Let's right. talk about liquidity in the system and the cost of capital. What's the optics there? The optics are that liquidity walked out the door at the end of June. It was normal. You get a spike at quarter end, and it didn't come back. So we're thinking, okay, who took their money off the table and left? We're seeing also a lot of managers who are worried about funds that have low liquidity and other issues, and they're looking to get their money back. So you saw in the taxes, you saw H2O. These are both little runs. We had things like this in 2007. And at the time, remember, everybody thought, oh, it's not a big deal. Then we had the Bear Stearns Fund go down. And even then, people didn't think it was a big deal. So all I'm saying is you're starting to see really rough water. And, you know, it's for me, what do I own? I own safe stuff in banks. I bought U.S. Bank in December. I own a lot of prefs and trups. Uh, but I got to tell you, there's not a lot of visibility on revenue or earnings going into next year. I, I agree with you. But and I think, by the way, that's why we haven't gotten the pop despite the earnings. But the most important question goes back to the cut. So I don't think he should cut, but here's why I'm convinced he will. Mm. And that's because what's the biggest criticism? The biggest criticism is not so much that he tightened in December. That's there. But, but right above that is that he miscommunicated, right? Poor mm. communication. Oh, very right? much so. Right? So despite you have Fed, uh, Fed Future showing 100 percent chance of a cut, he went in front of Congress and he let everybody believe there will be a cut, knowing know. that he had to communicate, can't afford another misstep. Well, this and is for no why other reason, that's why there's this a cut. This is why they should communicate less. I worked <clears throat> at the Fed. I think the open kimono policy I, I of agree. Bernanke was a big mistake. Yes. The chairman should speak after they vote, and that's it. And they should keep it as limited as possible. And unfortunately, after the crisis, they felt the need to be more open with the dot plots and everything else. So oh, yeah. if you believe that the Fed's not going to cut, would you be short this market here? That seems yeah. like the most the slam dunk call that, here, right? But that's my worry. I think the miscommunication and the lack of focus by uh -huh. the FOMC on the short end of the curve right. and what's happening there every day uh, runs the chance of repeating December. Repeating, so down 20% Yeah, or and, so. and also, more importantly, the complete drop off in new issuance. Corporates, ABS. ABS didn't come back. Corporates and mortgage came back, thank God. But the one thing I'll, I'll remind everybody about my banks is that, yeah, they have big volumes on mortgage, but they're not making money on those loans. The only right. loans they make money on are refinancing. So purchase mortgages are a dead loss. Sounds like you're in the bunker, Chris. Hey, I'm a credit guy. What can I no, say? I get Hope that. makes it go that. up, credit makes it go down. Mm -hmm. Always remember that. So then how, how, what, what do we see on the bond side of things in reaction to what you're predicting could be a 20 percent decline in equities? I mean, how low do we go Oh, oh, oh the yields? flight to quality will take us through, too. 
It will go back down below two on the 10 year. Oh, that's so it? Cut, I, I thought that you were going to be more Armageddon. I thought yeah. you were going below yeah. one. I know, yeah. you're talking. <laughs> exactly. but, but there's a strong bid anyway for that. That's what took us back down to two, right? So if Remember? you're a credit guy, you're worried about leveraged loans? Uh, I am. I'm worried about the ratings um, effect when they're all bunched on the edge of triple uh, B and they get downgraded. Boom. Uh, suddenly their audience is cut by 90% in terms of liquidity. And I, again, a lot of managers are getting antsy. They have big gains in some of these funds and they want their money back. You know, one thing I was surprised about though more recently is that we haven't seen a flight to quality within the fixed income market. Instead, you've seen more of a reach for yield where some of the higher yielding, riskier yes. assets are outperforming. Well, the spreads so definitely like the came in. The bond market really isn't seeing, isn't, isn't signaling your view. Well, it, yes and no. I mean, the CLO volumes still haven't come back to where they were. We cleared out the backlog from December, which was good. The conduits are kind of normal again, but you're not seeing the kind of demand we saw before. And again, I think some managers are just comfortable taking the money off the table, and especially before year end. I think year end is going to be really, really interesting because people don't want to have the same situation we had last December when there was no bid. You, you literally had big banks pulling back to prove to the regulators that they're liquid. And guess what? That means they're cutting off their customers. How, how wonderful is that? Who came up with this idea? 